What's up my friends? Welcome back, you're watching Harv Video Order Stuff and have you ever wondered what video waveforms are and how you could use them to improve your video? In this video I'll break it down in layman's terms and by the end of it hopefully you'll think of them as easy to use and incredibly useful. As always, I'm going to pop the timestamps below so you can just skip to the bit you want. I now have a Patreon for this channel. It's a non-profit thing, the idea being that with any funds from Patreon, I put it back into the channel, I buy equipment, I do unbiased reviews, and then give away the gear to backers. It's inexpensive to be a backer, just the cost of a cup of coffee. So if you like these videos and you find them helpful and you like gear giveaways, do check it out below, it's linked in the description box. So the questions I want to answer in this video are exactly what are waveforms? What are we looking at? How can we use waveforms to expose a scene if that's all we have? What's the deal with RGB waveforms? And finally, how can we use them to expose skin tones and then protect highlights? So, first question, what are they? Waveforms essentially are a way of communicating the brightness levels in your footage across the entire frame. You can see a scale of 0 to 100 is used and the higher that things appear on this, the brighter it is. Zero of course being completely dark and 100 being the point at which you get clipped overly bright highlights. People often refer to these brightness levels as IRE or percentage, and percentage is what I'm going to use for the rest of this video. So what exactly are we looking at? I tell you what, I'll pop a waveform just here so you can see of this scene. And you can see towards the top of it, you can see I've got this LED uh, sign here and then I've got an Edison bulb behind me. They're gonna be sort of around the top. And then the darker points, you can see I've got my computer behind me. That'll be at the lower point. Let's look at this scene as a better example. This is my favorite shot that I've taken this year and I definitely can't take credit for it. The mountain range, the fjord, the boats and that cool seaplane. The beautiful Norwegian Vista really did the hard work for me. By the way, if you like the way this is graded, I use the outstanding Vision Teal LUT from Phantom LUTs, and you get a discount when you use the code HARV at the checkout. You're welcome. Love these LUTs. The way that they roll off highlights is just magic. But we can see the brightest areas in the frame are here, where the sun is hitting the side of this boat, and up the top of the mountain. And by the way, that's actually a glacier you can see. So cool. Then we can see some of the shadow areas around here collecting around the bottom of the waveform. Notice that nothing goes beyond the very top or the bottom of the waveform, and that's exactly what we want. Going beyond these points looks like this. Looks awful, really not ideal. The result is lost information and detail, so we definitely want to try and keep things in the 0 to 100 range, if possible. Next, how to expose a scene if waveforms are all you have to judge your exposure. The quick, run and gun on the fly answer is to eyeball eyeball it into range and then fine tune, but that isn't particularly helpful to you. I like to think of the elements in a scene as a spectrum and then plot them onto your waveform. Highlights like direct sun, car headlights for example, you'll probably want sat above 90%. The sky, depending on the weather, will be around 70 to 80%. Skin tones between 50 to 70% depending on the skin tone. The majority of the rest of your image will want to sit below 40 to 50%. Most areas of greenery, buildings, interior spaces, it's really surprising how low these can sit in the Luma range. You may have noticed that there are a couple of different types of waveform, there's Luma and RGB. So far in this video, I've used only Luma and that indicates brightness, just brightness, Luma. RGB, as you may have guessed, splits the red, green and blue channels into separate waveforms. And to me, this isn't a particularly useful type of waveform because, yeah, to me, waveforms are an exposure tool. It's something that I use to expose my Luma, the brightness of my scene. However, RGB waveforms can be used to check your color and actually, in particular, white balance. Just hold something white in your scene and if your white balance is correct, the waveforms should be very even. If not, then they won't be. A huge benefit of using waveforms is that you can see exactly what's happening with your highlights at all times. It's really easy to see when your highlights are getting really hot and then you can preserve them or not, depending on your scene. The point is you can see them, so with that in mind you can then control them. It's a little harder to talk about hitting exact Luma percentages for exposing skin tones because, you know, when you're filming someone, skin tones tend to have much lighter areas and darker areas, and all of it is represented on a waveform. 
And I've just switched off one of my lights to demonstrate that you should still be able to see where your subject is on your waveform, particularly the light side of things. And really when it comes down to it, I prefer for precise exposure of skin tones, things like false color or zebras, of which I recently did a full guide for using zebras on Sony cameras, which I will link up there and down. One technique I haven't mentioned yet is the use of a gray card, which in theory takes the guesswork out of it, in theory. In this example, I'm shooting in Sony S-Log3 and I'm exposing middle 18% gray at as close to 41% as I can and that should give us a good exposure for S-Log3. The only thing with a grey card is it doesn't take creative exposure decisions into account. For example, if you wanted to film into the sun and have more of a silhouette look, particularly with sunsets, your exposure needs to be much lower than it would be if you exposed using a grey card. And actually this shot is a good example of this. Technically my exposure is correct because my skin tones are exposed as they should be, but because I'm stood in the shade and I've got an overcast background behind me, it's blown out. And this is what the exposure should look like for the background. Waveforms are actually my favourite exposure tool and so recommending them is, is easy, It's that's an easy recommendation for me and why? Well, I like that it gives you exposure information of your entire scene in real time, and I know that things like false colour will do a similar job, but I wouldn't enjoy so much switching it, you know, toggling it on and off to check exposure. I like that waveforms you have, you can just position it in, in the corner of your monitor screen, have it there all the time, leave it on, and you can just keep an eye on things all the time and it's just convenient. So anyway, now let's gather everything we've learned in this video and draw some conclusions. So waveforms are a way of communicating the brightness levels in your footage across the entire frame. I like to break down the elements in the scene and consider how they should sit on your waveforms. The key to waveforms for me is that you can keep a close eye on any highlights and then control them as you see fit. When it comes to skin tones, I find them not as accurate or easy to judge as zebras or false colour, but still not bad. A grey card can be a good option, but just consider any creative decisions before going to this. The overall takeaway is waveforms are a great exposure tool in my opinion and if you currently use histograms or god forbid those awful exposure meters that some cameras have looking at you sony i highly recommend giving waveforms a try anyway that's it for now i just hope you found this video interesting and helpful but i want to hear from you did you find it interesting and helpful let me know if so if there's anything else that you think would be interesting for me to cover also let me know that i read your comments and often I see a good idea in the comments and I make a video because of it, so definitely get stuck in. I've now made hundreds of videos about audio and video on this channel, of which YouTube has recommended this video for you, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help, help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.